Hello and welcome to GPSX Tutorial 9 Basic Customization. In this tutorial Axel, we will be learning to about how to your use existing models language. with new customizations. This tutorial can be found on the GPSX Tutorial Guide pages 85 to 93. So let's start by uh, taking the layout that we created in Tutorial 1 and saving it under the layout name Tutorial 9. You can either work with the tutorial that you've done earlier or you can go to the Sample Layouts menu and grab that Tutorial 1 layout. You then go back to File and Save As and then save it under the new Tutorial 9 layout name. In this tutorial, we are going to be using uh, Axle Customization to add a randomly generated noise signal to one of the output variables that comes out of a GPSX simulation. We will start by uh, making a dynamically active plant here by using the sinusoidal flow option. If you go to the Influent object and select the Flow Data menu, you can use this menu to select the sinusoidal data option. This applies a sinusoidal curve to the existing flow data. Next, let's go to the Aeration Tank and go to the Operational Parameters menu and use Entering Airflow option and set this to 30,000 meters cubed per day. Now if we go to the Simulation Mode, after saving the layout, go to the Simulation Mode and it will automatically build that layout for you. It is the oxygen uptake rate that we are going to be adding the noise to. So we want to create a new tab here and plot the influent flow, which will be varying with time, along with the oxygen uptake rate. So let's first go to the output variables flow menu of the influent object and drag ourselves a new graph. And next, right click on the aeration tank and select internal variables, which is where you can find many of the biological rates. So we're going to use the actual oxygen uptake rate menu. Let's click on the array button and grab the value from the first tank. And we'll plot these together on the same graph. So let's use the auto arrange button. And now we can set the properties of this graph by clicking on the graph properties button. And we can enter a new title here. So let's use influent flow and OUR. Let's turn off the option to scale them on the same axis and set individual scales here. So we'll use 0 to 10,000 meters cubed per day for the flow and we'll go from 250 to 1500 milligrams of oxygen per liter per day for the OUR. Okay, now that that's done, we can run a dynamic simulation. So let's do 10 days here and make sure we're starting from steady state and we hit start. And we can see our dynamically changing influent and the OUR changing correspondingly. Now what we want to do is create a new variable called noise, which is a normally distributed random signal. We can then add this to the OUR signal to create a new variable called OUR with noise. And lastly, we'll create two new variables for the specific OUR, one without noise and one with noise, which are SOUR1 and SOUR2, respectively. And this is done using the Axel language. Axel is a language that allows you to create new variables and perform new calculations. So in this case, to generate that random variable, we are going to use the Gauss command which creates a normally distributed random variable with a mean and standard deviation that are specified by the user. So back in GPSX we go to modeling mode and we go to the options, general data, user file macros menu and this brings up a window that allows us to enter and edit our own user code. There are four important sections to this menu. The initial section contains calculations that will be carried out before the dynamic simulation begins. The derivative section contains calculations that will happen every time step. The dynamic and discrete sections contains calculations that will happen every communication interval. 
And finally, the terminal section contains calculations that will happen at the end of the simulation after it has reached the terminal point. So our calculations will happen every time step in the derivative section. So following along with the text that has been prepared in Tutorial 9, we will start by uh, entering in a comment. Any line that starts with an exclamation point is ignored by the Axle Translator. So this is where we'll put a comment about conversion of units. The next step is the Gauss command, where we will be creating a new variable called noise that will have a mean and a standard deviation that will be specified by our constants, which we will add later. The OUR with noise variable is calculated as the OUR that is calculated by the model plus our noise variable, which we have calculated in the line above. And lastly, we will calculate our two new specific OUR variables. SOUR1 is equal to the OUR from the model divided by the VSS. So let's take a little short diversion here on how you find that VSS variable name. Anytime you open up a variable menu, you can hover your mouse cursor over any of the variables. A small pop-up window will show you the descriptive variable name as well as the important cryptic variable name, which in this case is VSSLMSS. So if we flip back to where we were, we can now enter that cryptic variable name, VSSLMLSS, into our calculation. Our second custom variable is SOUR2, which again is OUR, but this time we're using our variable that has the noise, and we're dividing it again by that same VSS number from the first tank of our plug flow system, and then the number 1000 to correct for units. Okay, so once all that's been entered in, you hit accept, and those calculations will be saved in your layout and compiled along with the rest of the model. If we go back to that general data user files constants menu, we can now create new constants that will become part of the GPSX menu system. So if I start by deleting the user defined constants text and enter in the new menu item name that we want to use, noise variables, we can also enter that same information on the header line that will be the title for our menu. So for each of the new constants that we are creating, we need to use the word constant followed by the cryptic variable name, followed by the default value, followed by an exclamation point, and a textual description of the new variable that we've created, and another exclamation point, and then the default units for this particular parameter. So we will add the standard deviation next, constant standard dev equals 50 for the default value as shown in our tutorial guide. The textual description of what that constant means. And its units. And now that that's done, the next step is to uh, accept those changes that you've made in this window. GPSX will uh, immediately prompt you to save your layout and then reload it in order for those changes to be uh, added to the GPSX menu system. So let's save it here and then go to File. And uh, the easiest way is just to grab it off of those recent layouts menu. Now if we return to the Options, General Data, User, Input Parameters menu, you'll see that our new noise variable menu has been created. It contains the two new variables that we have created and their default units. So the last thing to do is to create the output variables. And this is done almost exactly the same way as you created your input variables. However, we will be using the display command. So let's start by creating a new menu item here, uptake variables, and we will also list that for our header as well. So to create new output variables, you start with the word display followed by that new cryptic variable name, so in this case it's OUR with noise, an exclamation point, and then the textual description, and another exclamation point, and then the default units for that newly created variable.
So let's do it again for our other variables, SOUR1 and SOUR2 as well. In each case, putting down the description of the variable and its units. So once these variables have uh, been defined for our new uptake variables menu, let's create a second menu uh, that will have the noise variables. So let's uh, go up here and copy these two top lines and uh, move farther down and paste them again. And that now creates a whole second menu. So in this case, I'm going to change the word uh, uptake to noise in both of these cases. And then we will display the individual variables that we created that are related to the generation of the noise signal. So let's display the noise variable itself. This is just purely the value that's generated by that Gauss function. So we'll display that in its units. And we will also display the mean and standard deviation values that we will be using in the Gauss function itself. So in this case we're displaying the input as output directly. And now that those are complete, it's basically the same story as before. You hit accept. You will be prompted to save your layout and to reload it so that GPSX can add those new variables to uh, the menu system. Once that's been done, we can go back and uh, check on our new menus. So let's go back to Options, General Data, User, Output Variables, and you'll see our two new menus that we have created that are there and there's our new variables in their default units. So once that has been completed, we can then go to simulation mode. GPSX is compiling the model for us, including the new code that we added with the Axle commands. So now that that's done, let's make another tab here to control our noise variables. So we can right click here, go to user, input parameters, and noise variables, and grab those two new variables that we created and put them on sliders. We can then use the input control properties button to set the minimum and maximum ranges. And in this case, we want to go from minus 50 to 50 milligrams of O2 per liter per day. And let's work from zero to 100 uh, as our standard deviation. So I want to make a little more room here. I'm going to move this graph up and I'm going to right click here and go to user output variables and go to the new menus that we've created. So if I go to the uptake variables, let's grab those two new SOUR variables that we created and make a graph of them. We can use our Output Graph Properties menu by right-clicking here to uh, set the uh, scales of this particular graph and give it a title. And then uh, let's go back and grab one of those noise variables as well the OUR with noise and put that on this upper graph. And since I dropped that on there, I noticed it's come down in black. So let's uh, uh, pop into the Output Graph Properties menu here. And I'm going to change the scale so that it is the same as the other OUR variable we're plotting together here. 
and I'm going to change the color to blue. Okay, so we're all ready to run our 10-day uh, dynamic simulation starting from steady state. So we'll press start. And by observing the results, we can see the clean OUR signal and then the OUR signal that has had the noise added. So you can run a number of simulations here by increasing the uh, noise or changing the mean of the noise value. So that is how you do customization in GPSX using Axel. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products, such as CapDet Works for preliminary design and costing, ToxChem for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.